Hallelujah. Yes. I, I had about five different sermons I wanted to preach, but nevertheless, the Lord gave me a whole new direction this morning. About 12 or 5. You know, something about that 12 o'clock hour. Oh, and I just don't be so in such a hurry to go to sleep at night because you might miss something like the disciples did in the Garden of Gethsemane as I was preaching about that last week. But nevertheless, let's get started with something very important. Let's turn our Bibles to Ephesians 5, 1 through 7. This is just an introduction, uh, but then we'll go into the real thing that the Father told me this morning he wanted to give us. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. I really didn't know there was going to be an ordination this morning, but the Father did. Several of the songs was just so ministering to me for the things that God had shared with me and showed me. But fornicators and all uncleanness or covetous, let it not even be named among you. As it is fitting for the saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking or any of that stuff. We can't joke around. We can't fool around. This is real stuff. We're in the real fight here. Mm -hmm. right. This is no time to fool around. Right. No, tell it, no time to, for idle gossip and slander words and this sort of thing. No time to talk about people. Because if we haven't spent time with those people, we don't know them. Right. Now you can... Think you know them, you hear say, I've introduced to them, but you don't know them until you spend time with them. That's right. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be for takers of them. Now, when we sit in the company of people that slander other people, we are actually allowing our ears to become garbage cans. Mm -hmm. And we are coming along in agreement with them, whether we participate or not. But as I was praying this morning, and the Lord said, uh, I won't, I tell my people, I want to clothe them this morning. I want to put on their clothes that they need for the end times. Yes. There's coming very soon mm. perilous times. Are we ready? The Lord said, will I find faith when I return? Will I find faith when I return? Well, the Lord said, I said, well, Lord, what, what are you telling me? What, what do you want me to share? They said, go to Ephesians 6. I said, but everybody knows putting on the armor of God. Yes, but I want you to go into each piece of these armor. I'm going to tell you what I want you to tell them. As you open your mouth, I will tell you. So he began with telling me Ephesians 6, finally in verse 10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood and against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is what we're wrestling against. Let me tell you, if you ever think that you can defeat Satan in the flesh, I got a root, you've got a rude awakening to come around. Because I'm telling you, you'll be like the sons of Skevia. And if you don't know 
what happened to them, you need to read a little bit more. You've got to know who you are before you come up against the devil. You've got to know that you are a child of the mighty God and you are indeed armed and dangerous. Let me tell you, as we put on the armor of God, we are going to be fully equipped as David was when he stood before Goliath. He didn't need a false armor. He didn't need the armor like the king wore because he was armed with what God did. If God tells you, if he sends you somewhere, he'll send you through it. Don't be fretting about what you're going to do when you get there. If he sends you somewhere, he will equip you when you get there. Yeah. We think too much. We think ourselves out of being uh, used to God. On, God said, lean yeah. not on your own understanding, but in all yes. your ways acknowledge me, and I will direct your path. Mm. Yes. Did he not say that? Mm. Yes. We've got to get armed and dangerous for the days coming ahead. Mm. We've got to know the Bible. We've got to read it and know it. And how are we going to do that? By the Holy Spirit. Yes. The Holy Spirit is what gives us the revelation knowledge yes. of the Word of God, yes. which is Jesus Christ. Yes. The Word became flesh and oh, dwelt no. among us. Oh, Woo! Oh, no. yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, He's still the same yesterday, today, yes. and forevermore. Yes. He never lost one minute of his glory. And let me tell you, the Holy Spirit does not take third place in the Trinity. Let me tell you, the Holy Spirit is the least one spoke of today, and it's the one that lives and abides in us here on yes. this Hallelujah. earth this day. We best better give them space. We better quit quenching the Spirit. We better get out of our head and he can work. We better uh, be allowed to be a vessel. What is a vessel? How much junk does a vessel have in order to be flown through? You better hope it's clean better than... Uh, uh, any kind of pipe cleaner can clean, but the cleaning of the Holy Ghost, the light of the Lord, uh, the Lamb of the Lord that shows us and enlightens us what we need to be cleaned mm. of. Uh, he on, is now. a deliverer of yes. our soul. Yes. We have to have our soul cleaned out. Yes. Uh, we got to get the stinking thinking out of the way. <laughs> That's uh, right. We got right. to be ready to put on this armor. Yes. He said, my church, I want to tell you, I have came to give you your outfit. Let's get dressed up today. Yes. Let's get dressed up today yes. that we will be equipped uh, for the war that is about to take place. Uh, yes. do you, have you ever wondered why the wealth of the wicked is stored up for us? Uh, well, let me tell you, they're going to be out uh, uh -huh. with their sweat earning a living and getting all this money stored up for us, when the hard times come, they're going to run to us and throw it at our feet. Tell me! Come on Tell me mm. how you can be at peace at a time like this. Come on how can you sing praises unto the Lord at a time like this? How can you look so happy and joyful at a time like this? Well, well, let me tell you, when a person asks you a question, they got an ear to hear what the spirit of the living God has to say. When we say, follow me as I follow Christ, every person that is a child of God and knows the word and walks the word can tell another person, follow me yes. as yes. I follow Christ. Yes. We can be a follower to become a leader, to make disciples of all that we meet. How do we do that? Through discipline. That's right. Discipline. Discipline. And you know, a lot of people don't like that word because it does hurt. The old flesh don't like it one little bit. Right. When you tell it it's going to pray all night instead of sleep, it don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. When you say you're going to skip all the meals until you hear a word from the Lord, he don't like to hear that. Right. He don't like to hear I'm going to love the unlovable. I'm going to go the extra mile. This person that's been rejected from the world, I'm going to befriend them and and I'm going to take them under my wing and I'm going to love them and I'm going to disciple them. Mm. Mm. Do we take time to do what the Lord said to? Do we know what L-O-V really is? Mm. 
Have we ever did a study on what real love is? Do we know who is love? Mm -hmm. And he said, we, you will know them by the love they have one yes, for another. Yes. has nothing to do with the culture you're in, the color of your skin, yes. or how educated you are. Yes. It has to do uh -huh. with if you love the Lord in your yes. heart. Mm -hmm. It's a heart thing. Yes. Man yes. looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. Yes. You better hope your heart has been turned over to the mighty God yes. where you can love the unlovable. Yes. You can reach out and make a difference because the world don't want nothing we have if we are like the world. When most churches are showing nothing different than the world, they look the same, they act the same, uh -huh. they walk the same, and they ignore the needs of the people. My God. Walk right by them. I didn't see them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll not even look. I remember another story about the good Samaritans that that happened to. Come on now. Oh. Um, I've got on my Sunday best. I cannot stop here. I may get soiled. I cannot be troubled with this. They might cause me to lose a little sleep or a little time. I got a dinner date I've got to be at. Oh, but God says I'm fixing to clothe you. Fixing to clothe you. All that want a new outfit. He said I'm fixing to clothe you. For the new app, for the new day that's coming. It's a new day. New day. This year, I, I know by the Spirit of God, He showed me so clearly the people that He has impregnated with a vision, a dream, yes. something that has not taken place the new year. And something about 12. He used yes. 12 disciples and 12 so many times. We have the 12 tribes. Let me tell you, there's something about the number 12. But there's coming a birthing in this season, this year. People are going to see new things if you think not. The baby's in position. And it's already got it the place that it's in the canal. And it's just so ready. It's still. And you think, oh, God, I'm not hearing from you. What's going on? It's the preparation time. It's the preparing of the birthing of what is about to take place. Yes. So we've got to be ready. we got to be armed and dangerous and having on our broad robe, the one that the Lord intended us to wear. So let us go on down in Ephesians as he talks about this outfit he wants to give us to wear. Oh, he says, wherefore, take upon you the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil days and have it done all stand. We are not standing, remember, the waiting for the birthing. We're standing. But Satan's always ready to get us to abort. In that waiting time, that standing time, we always think we've got to be doing something. Oh, what am I supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to be doing? Did he say that we receive our salvation by grace or by works? Did he tell us to cast all of our cares upon him for he cares for us? Or did he tell us to take our own yoke? Or did he tell us to take upon ourselves his yoke for it is light and easy to bear? My, my, it's in the standing time. Yes. It's in the desert time. The time of waiting that the enemy is about to abort your dream, your vision. How many times have we started over with a dream or a vision or an impregnation of something that the Father has given us because it got too heavy to carry? Because it comes with a lot of load. Sometimes we have a load far heavier than we want to carry. And we say, I can't do this. But then he says, what about Philippians 4.13? A lot of people quote that, but they don't understand. It's not about you. <laughs> it ain't about you and your ability. He said, you can do all things through me. 
I've, I've had so many heavy loads that I've been able to carry, but not in my power, but by calling upon the name of the Lord. Because I had a man's job to raise my children. I didn't have the body for a man's job. But God. But God. We have to know that he says you have not because you ask not. So we go on with the armor. As I go down every rabbit trail, that's okay because you know what? I usually kill that rabbit before it's over. <laughs> <laughs> rabbit trails and all. I tried to be like a normal, uh, everyday pastor and preacher, but the Lord said, how about be you? Because if you're not you, who's going to be you? So I decided it's so much easier to wear my shoes than somebody else's. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And it makes it easy. <laughs> and it does. All right. We are always putting on our armor now. We're going to, we're standing. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Okay, have you ever thought about a belt? How many times you put on a belt? Sometimes it's too tight. Sometimes it won't fit right. But it sure does hold it in, don't it? He said, put that belt on, because it's going to hold your whole armor on, because of truth. That way we won't be swayed into another doctrine, another lie, the lies that will entrap you. Religion will only put you in bondage. Christ has set us free. Galatians 5, 1 says, Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage in which I have set you free. So we got our belt on. Oh, I got the truth that nobody ain't coming to me with a lie because I'm going to know they're lying to me. Because, you know, that get, that is discernment. Aha! Uh -huh. Now, when somebody tells you a lie, you know it. And they don't understand why you ain't buying it. <laughs> but I got my belt of truth on. Now, I'm telling you. That belt is going to hold me right. It's going to hold me right on, right on. So I got my belt on, and then I've got truth, uh, which is the breastplate of righteousness. Now, whose righteousness is this I'm wearing? It's not mine because he says my righteousness is a filthy rag. So why, may, why are so many people patting themselves on the back like, look what I did. I healed those people. I did this. I did that. Sounds like you're wearing the breastplate of righteousness. The righteousness of Christ, which is there to catch every fiery dart of the enemy. When he's fired at you, and believe me, he's fired at you on every way. If you got a family like mine, uh, sometimes you can't duck very well, so you better head on and look face on with them. And let that breastplate catch them arrows where you don't get affected by it. And lose your belt. And lose all the truth that you know. You got to hold on and keep your arm on. Even if you think it gets heavy, remind yourself uh, of who you are, whose you are, who he said you are, and truck on. Okay, we got the belt on, we got the truth on with a breastplate of righteousness. And now, we're fixing to put our shoes on. And watch this. We're fixing to put our shoes on. And I'm telling you, I'm taking mine off. <laughs> now, he said shod with the preparation of the gospel. That means you've got to have special shoes on. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They're special shoes, meaning that they are, what, the gospel? A peace? And if you ain't got Christ on, then you don't have peace. The world can't give you peace. The world can't give you joy. They give you false everything. They give you false joy, happiness. But it ain't nothing but for a season. 
it, if it's raining, I don't have no happiness. Mm -hmm. Come on. Or whatever the situation is. But I'm going to be shod with the preparation of the gospel. Mm -hmm. The gospel of peace. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go round spreading the good news of the gospel. Yeah. Come on now. I'm going to know how to run yeah. and jump. Because I got on the right shoes, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you got the right shoes on. He said, you got to have the right ones on. Right. Let me put them on you. Me put them on you. Yeah. Remember the story of the prodigal. When the father, bring the shoes and put on his feet, bring the sandals and put on his feet, he knew he needed his identity. Well, the Father is our identity. We better hope we have our identity on. That's the full armor. The full armor. Eat them with the shoes of peace. To spread the gospel. We got the shoes on to spread the gospel. We're not going to be deceived because we got the belt on. The belt of truth. Nevertheless, let's get on with it. And Shirley, uh, don't even laugh about that. Uh, one time before I lost a slip, she picked it up.
We're putting on that outfit. We're dressing up for the days to come. We're dressing up. Woo! Isn't that wonderful? Dressing up to be prepared. And the enemy don't like it. Oh, he hates it when we're happy. Okay, now listen to this. We're going somewhere else. We're taking the helmet. The helmet. Think about the helmet. The helmet of salvation. Oh, you know, that is no wonder that the Lord called the helmet the salvation because he is the salvation and he is the head of the body. He's the head of the body. He said, if you follow me, if you follow me, you will not be deceived. You will not follow. You will not listen to another voice. And in the old days, in the original helmets, they went around your jawbone. So that's supposed to warn you what to say. Life and death is in the power of your tongue, Amen. not your brother's tongue. He can't send you to hell, even if he tries. I mean, believe me, I'd have been there three of times. Yes. I have a lot of people that don't like me, and I don't know why. Oh, well, it don't bother me anymore. But anyway, the words that we speak are life and death. And that jawbone was protected with this helmet we wear. The helmet of salvation, which he is. He and he alone is our salvation. It's not by your works, he says. Not by your works. Thank God. Because look, you know, how many of you have ever filled out an application went for a job you weren't qualified? Cheapers, creepers, ain't that tacky? But we all come the same plateau to our Father. The same place. When we come repenting, we come repenting. I'm just a sinner, Lord. A wretched sinner, save me. Be my father. So now we have the helmet of salvation on. We have a leader. We have a head that we can follow. And as the word that was given this morning, about my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. We've got the helmet on, the helmet of salvation, which gives us the ability to be identified as a child of the Most High God. Amen. So now when we hear the voice, we know whose voices we are hearing, and we will not follow a stranger because we know we are his and he is ours. We have the helmet of salvation on. Amen. We can decorate it up if you want to put a little color on it. You know, so be it. <laughs> if you want it brown or bronze or, or white or whatever, I'm sure you wouldn't care if you put a rose on it or colored it a little bit. But as long as you keep it on. Amen. Just keep it on. Amen. Keep it on. Oh, the sword of the spirit. My, my, do we ever need the sword of yes. the Spirit? Mm -hmm. yes. The Word of the God, the mm -hmm. Word of the living God. Mm -hmm. We know where it says, the Word became flesh. And dwelt among us. Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Oh. Having that, you know, a belt will carry the, the little pocket that we need to put our sword in, you know? Or whatever it needs to be used for, it holds up all the other parts of the armor. Truth. 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 Praying always with prayer and supplication. In the spirit. Waiting. Watching. Therefore, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Did you know you were a saint? A lot of people have a problem with that because, you know, in the Catholic Church, they have saint this, saint that, and saint that. But hey, they forgot to say Saint Linda. That's okay. But my father said I was a saint. Do I act like a saint? No, I mess it up a lot, but that's okay. Calling things his 
though they were evil and that's yes. we're walking in that. We know that he, he gave us this because when he looks at us, he doesn't see this old mere body. He sees his son Jesus. He looks and says, Hallelujah. where is my son Jesus? Mm. Where is my son Jesus? Then God works with God. Yes. Bing, 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 yes. bing, bing, bing. You would do more than these things that I, when I leave. Why? Because it's more of us. You know, Jesus died to destroy the works of the devil, but to give sons to his father. Many sons, many sons, many sons to do the work of the Lord. Many sons. That's why the enemy, if he only knew what he was doing when... Jesus was crucified. Mm. But hey, he couldn't do nothing about it anyway. Hey, Jesus could have called 10,000 angels, but he didn't. He bled the first blood in the Garden of Gethsemane for us, for each one of us. And I know that God says to each one of us today, if you wear this outfit that I've provided for you, there will be no enemy that ever comes around you that will stand. But you get tired of it and you take a piece of it off, you're in trouble. This is all your choice, he says. He says, I'm going to tell you, he said, I, I'm going to tell you, saints of mine, I'm going to tell you this day. I have given you every provision. Every provision. There's not one lacking. Not one thing. Now it's up to you. When I came and I walked the earth, I said, I came not to do my will but the Father's will. I'm asking each one of you today, whose will will you follow? It's all up to you. Do it your way. Be like Elvis. I did it my way. What happened to him? Do it your way and you will fail. Because in the flesh, we cannot defeat the enemy. Father God, I thank you for this day. I give you praise and honor for each man and woman that are going to be ordained of you this day. They have chosen to serve you. And that is an awesome privilege. Father God, to, to be a servant of yours, to be a bond servant of yours is so wonderful. To choose to be enslaved by you and your own. Oh, Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you're going to be with each and every one of the people that are in this place today. Every need that they have. And if there be someone here today that doesn't have this peace and joy, then they need you, Father God. Have them to come to the altar, come and repent and lay it down at the altar and cry out and receive you as your Lord, your Savior, your Father. Abba! Oh, what a wonderful thing to be your son. Don't miss it. If you feel the tugging to receive from something from God, you may have been in a church building for many years, but you may feel a tugging. I want to feel that peace. I want to be able to soar with the eagles. I want to be able to experience going boldly to the throne room. Well, you have the opportunity every day of your life to choose that place. Father God, I thank you for what you have done in our lives and what you're going to do. I thank you for the birthing of a great things, great things, great things in the spiritual realm that you're going to bring forth this year. And I ask you to be with each one of us to keep us so guarded that we guard our mouth and we know that we live for you, Father God, and we have that peace and assurance that we are yours and you are ours. And we give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory in your precious son Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. amen.